Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I am doing a video on Docker application for creating an open source central logging platform. I created this application and named it Black Ask. It is a combination of Elasticsearch, SyslogNG, and Kibana. This package comes with an install script that basically builds the whole application without user input. First, I will do a demo of the installation and then I will go over different configuration in features of this application. I'm really excited for this Black Ask Sim and look forward to add a lot of features to turn this basic open source central logging platform to a full blown Sim platform which can be used for small to medium sized environments. This is also a good deployment for our own home labs and or internet infrastructure that some of us may have. Without further ado, let's jump right in. I'm on the Black Ask Git repository. Let me go ahead and copy the URL and clone it to a temporary folder here. Clone. The repository contains everything that is needed to get this instance up and running. Let me go ahead and log into the black ask folder here. And as you can see, there are a bunch of files and directories. The most important one for us for now is the install.assets script. And also there is an uninstall.assets which can be used if you run into any errors and have to start over. You should barely have to do that, but just in case you run into any issues, it's there so that you can start over. Also notice that there is no execute permission on this script. So we would run it with sh in the beginning. So let me go ahead and run the sh install.sh and it errors out saying that, or it just gives you the uses instruction. You can run the install.sh script either with a single dash node option or a multi dash node option. Let me go ahead and run it in the single node mode for this demo. Oops, sorry, that was uh, install.sh. As you can see, it starts by creating the certificates for the cluster. The certificates have been created, then it creates the instances for the ask stack, which is the syslog, the Elasticsearch, and the Kibana. Every time it creates these instances, the installer waits for the Elasticsearch or Kibana to be ready based on whatever it is doing at the moment. So right now it is waiting on Elasticsearch in order to perform some operations on the Elasticsearch instance. I don't expect you to encounter any issues, but just in case if there is an error, it doesn't you know, detect the Elasticsearch to be running properly, you can always just run the uninstall.sh and start over. So now the Elasticsearch is the Elasticsearch is now ready and the installer is moving on. It just takes about, you know, 40 to 55 seconds depending on it may take more depending on the system and whatnot. Now it's recreating the stack. Again, it has to wait for the Elasticsearch to be ready because it just recreated the instance and Elasticsearch and Kibana take a little bit of time for them to be ready and available for any operations. 21 seconds elapsed, um, took 54 seconds on the last uh, wait. So it may take somewhere close, okay, 32 seconds this time. So now it's creating the syslogng role. Now it's waiting on Kibana to create the index pattern and the users and stuff like that. Took about 21 seconds for Kibana to be ready. Now it's creating the index pattern. Everything seems to have been completed without any problems. Also, if you notice here, it generated some fake logs. You can delete the index and start over. So 10 fake logs have been generated and everything should have been completed. Please log into 
HTTPS, whatever the IP address of your host machine is on port 5601 with the following user. The username, the default username to be able to log into the Kibana interface is Elastic. And here's the password for this instance. The initial set of credentials are also stored in the creds.txt in the current directory. And like everything else, don't forget, don't forget to change the default credentials. If we cat. Uh, it looks like there's a little bit of typo. I'm going to fix that. So it's the dot creds dot txt. So there's all the credentials, the default credentials that were created by the installer. It changes on every instance. So make sure every time you recreate this, you use the correct credentials. Now, um, let me copy. I believe I already copied, but let me go ahead and do that anyways. And we will log into the Kibana interface. So let's say 192.168.233.150 in 5601 is the port number. Oops, looks like some typo. HTTPS 192.168.233.150 column 5601. Okay. So as you can see here, we have a self-signed certificate. This is one of the to-do items for me. I will create a video another time on how to do the Let's Encrypt for this SSL certificate so that we don't have to worry about this warning. For now, let's just go ahead and proceed. Now that we have the login screen, the default username, like the installer said, is Elastic, and I am pasting the password. Okay, so this is the default screen that you are taken into when you log in. It has a bunch of things, but now let's just go ahead and look at the Discover screen. This is where you already have some logs coming in from the syslog server. Now let's go into the stack management here. And as you can see here, there are options for Elasticsearch, there are options for Kibana, and there are some security options. If we look at the roles, we will see that there is a syslog-ng role that's been created by the installer for you. As you can see, it has the privileges to create, create underscore index, which is the create index, and write to that index. So the indices that the syslog-ng role has access to is the syslog-ng star. We have rolling indices here the wazoo dash star in windows underscore star. So I am working on implementing the wazoo and windows integration. Actually the windows integration should just work. I will create another video on how to actually, you know, configure that and do a demo, but everything that's needed for windows logging is included as well as the wazoo log parsing and stuff. Now that we know that the role has been created, let's go ahead and check the users. And as you can see here, the syslog-ng user has been created with the syslog-ng role. So that's how syslog-ng is able to talk to Elasticsearch and send logs over to those indices. Let's go to the index management on the Elasticsearch here. And you can see there is a syslog-ng underscore year, month, and day index. So that's how we're creating the rolling indices on the syslog ng and it does have it just rolls over like every day you will have a new index that way it's easier to manage and which is why we created the pattern of underscore star now if we go to the index patterns on the kibana you can see that there is the syslog dash ng underscore star pattern which kind of includes all the syslog ng indexes generated every day if you look at there, these are all the mappings here, and there's also the time filter field name is ISO date. And you can see there are about 53 different indexes. Now let's go to the discover interface here. As you can see, we are seeing 41 hits for the last 15 minutes. Right? So also let's go ahead and because the Docker, the virtual machine that I've been working on, I just leave it to sleep and whatnot. So the times may be a little off. So I'll just go ahead and increase the timeline here. 
54 logs and you can see the other indexes got populated, right? So let's go ahead and search for SSH. Uh, oh, well, let's go ahead and search for program equals SSHD. And we, see, we can see that the SSH program logs are here. And if you look at this logs, the syslogng has already converted the client's IP address to geolocation information. You have the zero point, you have country information. And depending on if the um, IP location was able to convert, the UIP was able to convert your um, IP into the state information as well, you will have that state and state code all this populated. Remember, this is a fake log generated by our log gen script. So all these, you know, client IPs are random IPs. The usernames are random. The port source port are random just to give you a feel for it, right? You could create the dashboard based on like, you know, the location. You can create world maps and stuff like that. Now um, that we have seen the stack and we have been able to deploy this instance, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the files and directories in there. Ask. So as you can see here, there is an extras directory. It has a logzen.sh um, shell script and uh, nxlog.sample.conf. The nxlog.sample.conf is a ready-to-go nxlog sample configuration that you can use with your nxlog installation. If you don't already know, nxlog is a Windows log shipping agent that supports Windows logging. NX log download and you can see here if you go to the NX log here you can download the Windows MSI you can install that and then just drop in the drop in the NX log dot sample dot conf and replace the um, default NX log dot conf and the only thing that needs to be configured is right here and here so this defines what logs do you want to send over to syslog and this is where we convert the logs to json format so that the syslog ng can then process and send over to elasticsearch instance i will do a separate video on the windows logging so if you wanted to go ahead before that just feel free there's this other script logzen.sh so let me go ahead and um, run the extras logzen.sh so you, if you run it without any options, it just generates two logs, but then you can pass in the number, for example, 50, and then it'll generate 50 fake logs. And that those will be sent over, sent over to your Elasticsearch instance. Now, we see that for program SSSD, we have five hits. If we refresh, we now have 31 hits. The time and dates may be a little bit off in this instance, but you know, when you have all the times and everything, uh, correct and when you don't send your server to sleep then you should be fine that's that for the extras folder now if you look at the kibana this is the kibana.yml file this is the kibana settings i do have the encryption key here randomly set you might want to change this what this does is this lets you this lets you use the alerting functionality of the elastic search or the kibana so if you go to alerts and action, if you go to alerts and actions here, it says that you have to set a value for the encryption key in your Kibana.yml. Let me see if I didn't do that. Okay. Let's config kibana.yml. Okay, it looks like I may have missed that. I will update the git repo and you should be able to see this fine. Um, the file just needs to be mapped over. I could probably fix that right now. Um, we'll just fix that in a minute uh, here. Uh, so onto the next folder, we have the syslog-ng folger. We have the syslog dog dot docker file here let me take a quick look here so it just like you know pulls the alpine image builds the syslog ng and um, that's about it it calls the build.asset script you can feel free to explore the scripts but the, the more important thing is the conf directory 
here we have all these, um, oops, the search is a, just a dummy folder. We have created the volume for, the, for holding the search. There is a feeds directory. And here is known IPs file. So this is a source IP. And if this is present in the host info, if this IP is present in the client IP field, it will map the host info to this value. So depending on your use case, you can adjust that. Then we have the zeolite2-city. There is the MaxMind GeoIP database. This is the free version. Feel free to update that for more accurate stuff. There is some lists here. Um, just an example, tweak. Feel free to tweak it, enhance it the way you seem fit. This discard.list has a list of um, you know, programs that I don't want to log into the Elasticsearch. They will be just dropped. There is blacklist programs, so I'm just dropping Chrome D, for example, in this. Then we have the pattern DB folder, which is an interesting um, topic by itself. It is used to parse the log messages to extract the information that you would want to be indexed. I will quickly talk about this, but I have a video uh, specially dedicated to the pattern DB. So you can see here there's the XML format and it maps this, you know different log items to different uh, index keys. And this is how we are able to here see the, if we go back here, we are able to see different, you know, um, the SSH auth user, the result of the authentication, whether it was accepted or failed and things like that. So those are extracted from this message. So, you can use PatternDB to extract any information for any type of logs. I have included some of the default ones that I could gather from the internet, and I have some that I customized for my own needs. So feel free to use that. If you end up creating your own parsers, I would appreciate if you guys could just, you know, um, send me a sample copy as well. Then back to the, these are just the, um, you know, the scl.com is a simple, uh, SCL file that's just there for including in our syslog ng config. This is a simpler version of the syslog configuration if you wanted to reference. And this is our main syslog ng config. Um, I have a separate video on syslog ng, so please uh, go ahead and watch that if you would like to learn more about syslog ng. I have other videos that go on the details of like the, you know, uh, Elasticsearch, uh, Kibana, Syslog NG, Pattern DB, and all those stuff. And if you have any questions, please uh, leave comments below and I will get back to you as and when I can. I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell icon to get notified when I publish a new video. This also helps support the channel and keep me motivated for new videos. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.